Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, George Mason University proudly brings to you its premier movie review program that's out of this world. I'm the Dean Machine, Roger Dean, with Mason Cable Network and Student Media, and this is From the Cinema. Hello all, welcome back to From the Cinema. I hope everyone had a good spring break. I worked all break and did take a break to watch a movie. Uh, in case you didn't know, I am reviewing Fifty Shades of Grey, so before I begin, please throw out all preconceived notions of this movie that you had prior. Um, I had no prior knowledge about this movie. I mean, of course, I've heard everyone's very strong opinions of the movie, but I hadn't seen it or heard much about it. Um, I saw this movie because I wanted to be able to have an informed opinion about this movie, and I wanted to, you know, review it for you all. So without further delay, I will review Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey is a 2015 British-American erotic romance film. Now, let's break that part down. This movie definitely is on the erotic side. And the British really must have a very different, uh, very different definition of the word romance if this is on their list of romance movies. The movie was directed by Samantha Sam Taylor Johnson. She is a dame, the female equivalent of a knight in the most excellent order of the British Empire. She's knighted. Uh, she is the wife of Aaron Taylor Johnson as of 2012. He will be Quicksilver in the upcoming Avengers Age of Ultron movie. He is the main character in Godzilla, 2014, and he's the main character in the Kick-Ass series. He's Kick-Ass. Dame Taylor Johnson is an English filmmaker, photographer, and visual artist. Uh, her directorial feature film debut came out in 2009 uh, with Nowhere Boy, a film based on the childhood experiences of the Beatles singer-songwriter John Lennon, starring her future husband. The movie has a screenplay by Kelly Marcel, based on the novel of the same name by E.L. James. Now, to be honest, I personally thought E.L. James was a male. That is actually the pen name for Erica Mitchell. She is the British author who wrote the best-selling trilogy, Fifty Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades Darker, and then Fifty Shades Freed. The series is about the relationship between a wealthy businessman, Christian Grey, portrayed by Jamie Dornan, and a young student, Anastasia Steele, portrayed by Dakota Johnson. The story is about how Steele, as a college graduate, begins a sadomasochistic relationship with a young business magnate. He would say that it is a, uh, a dominant and submissive relationship, which I will talk about later. The film was written following the huge success of the book selling over 100 million copies and being translated into 52 languages. I want to mention shortly what the series has done to the world. The combined novels have sold over 70 million copies worldwide over 35 million copies in the United States alone, and it set the record in the United Kingdom as the fastest selling paperback of all time. Now listen to this. In 2012, Time Magazine named E.L. James one of the world's 100 most influential people. What is she influencing? Whatever. Now to be specific, since Mr. Gray would like to make sure that this distinction is made, there is a difference between dominance and submission and sadomasochism. Sadomasochism is the giving or receiving of pleasure, sometimes sexual, from acts involving infliction or the reception of pain or humiliation. The term sadist is the absolute term proposed for individuals who derive pleasure from the suffering of others. The masochist is the person who is gratified by pain and degradation. And now in dominance and submission lifestyles, both parties take pleasure or erotic enjoyment from either dominating or being dominated. Those who take the superior position are called dominants, doms, D-O-M-S, for males, or doms, D-O-M-M-E-S, for females. While those who take the subordinate position, uh, they are called the submissives or subs, despite the gender. All right, now the actual review. The film premiered at the 65th Berlin International Film Festival on February 11, 2015, and had a wide theatrical release on February 13, 2015 by Universal Pictures. It was an immediate Valentine's Day box office success, breaking numerous box office records and earning over $547 million worldwide off of a $40 million budget. That's 10 times as much, plus. You know what they say, you gotta spend money to make money. It is currently the highest grossing film of 2015, and I don't see a higher grossing film coming out this year. <coughs> Star Wars! That's totally a joke. I am expecting Avengers Age of Ultron to bury this movie under millions of dollars, if not billions, as well as Star Wars. A sequel is planned for 2016 for the second book, Fifty Shades Darker. The movie really only stars those two characters, and no one else really matters in this movie. 
Uh, now, this movie, in all honesty, was not as bad as I was expecting it to be. The movie definitely has some erotic aspects to it. The movie is not good. Uh, but the reason for every bad thing in this movie, I will blame on the book. It is sexist in the way it portrays females. It, it shows all of Anastasia and almost none of Christian. Do people only want to see the female nude? I'm just saying. I thought I was really going to really dislike Anastasia for all of the flaws that I expected her to have. But I was really shocked to find out that she wasn't that bad. The reason this movie is so bad is just because Christian Grey is... He's just awful. Like, he just sucks. However, I mean, he's just, he just really messed up. But that's because he has his own problems too. I mean, people with money tend to have those. I mean, everybody tends to have those. He is a really big rich mogul that expresses control in all things. He is just awful. And it makes me not want to like Anna because how Anna feels about him. It's really crazy. But what's crazy is how many love stories that are famous in the world that have similar odd and destructive senses of love. Phantom of the Opera, which is my favorite musical of all time and one of my favorite love stories of all time, definitely has its fair share of odd moments and problems. Romeo and Juliet, which is the pivotal love story that almost all teenagers wanted to be like at one point until they realized that Juliet was like super prepubescent and Romeo was almost a grown man. Um, and their very short love life ended with their death as well as the death of plenty of others. And then there's Twilight, which is publicly butchered by so many people in the world. But that's actually what this started this whole series. The series was based on Twilight fan fiction. If you don't believe me, look it up. People consider this movie to be glorified abuse. There are abusive parts in this movie, and there are parts in this movie that are dark. If people say that this story has super abusive factors in it, whatever they are, they're not, the, they're not depicted in the movie. There are crazy things that happen in the movie, but this movie isn't as bad as people think it is but it is not good by any means. If you like the books, go see it if you want to see how they did it in the movie. If you didn't read the books, you can see the movie if you want to have an educated opinion about the story. Or you could just not see it. This movie isn't awful, but you know who is? Mr. Christian Grey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to go to the theater and see this, trust me, Mr. Grey will see you then. Bottom line, one, Make sure you read all contracts in depth. Two, if someone is being abusive, please seek help to remove yourself from that situation or just leave. Three, there is support for people in relationships like these, and worse and better. Four, the world is a crazy place. Some people are into crazy things, but hey, I don't judge. Five, if not the major redeeming quality of this movie, the soundtrack is definitely one of the best things about this movie. It might be nominated for an Oscar. The soundtrack, not the movie. Uh, six, this movie is rated R. Seven, there is nudity, just in case you didn't know. Eight, sometimes people get so crazy in love. I thank you all for sticking around to the end of the video as stated. Uh, before, I won't give it a rating here, but I will on my blog, which you can check out when I review it there, at rogersrundown.blogspot.com. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or emotional outbursts, feel free to reach out to me personally on my Twitter, at dmachine2016, or on my blog, which is again, rogersrundown.blogspot.com. That is all. Thank you. And until next time, do good things and make good choices.